hardest thing in doing stand-up in a club is uh, going on third. <laughs> Just right along here. So we're going to bring our next comic up. You guys ready already? Yeah. Sure. So our uh, next comic would like to dedicate his performance today to all his haters. <laughs> Especially his therapist. Give it up for Paul Murphy. Please keep it going for my partner on stage, Crippling Hangover. Yeah, and I'm close to 30 now, so he'll be here all week. <sighs> but seriously, I just can't, I just can't bounce back after a long night of drinking like I used to. I mean, I didn't even used to need coffee, and today at Starbucks, my specialty order was just a pipe and hot venti blonde roast poured all over my fucking face. <laughs> Honestly, it's called the Skin Graft Americano, and they only charge you seven fifty. It really cuts out the nausea. <laughs> Hope you guys are uh, hanging out with your dads today, or Will. Uh, I get to talk to mine on the phone. Uh, all my family's out west, so it's kind of days like these that I, I really miss being there for the big events. I missed a huge milestone for my parents last, uh, last month, actually. My mom and dad, get this, celebrating 17 strong years of divorce. <laughs> yeah, almost two decades of holy unmatrimony. It's the most successful long-distance relationship I've ever been a party to. And I gotta say, Mom, Pop, I promise you, I'll be there in person for your silver and divorcery in a couple years. <laughs> You guys, and divorceries, they're a lot of fun. They really are, but divorce, it's a, it's a little depressing. I'm a child of divorce. Child of divorce. And, um... <laughs> yeah, it is a very Irish term, but, uh, actually, it's not that funny. My mom left the house a week after my ninth birthday. And, like a lot of kids, I blame myself. Except I really did deserve to blame myself, because a, a week before, I clearly remember blowing out all the candles on my cake and wishing for two Christmases. <laughs> when they say you can't have your cake and family too. <laughs> yeah, and it really, when it all pans out, I realized I only got one and a half Christmases because I never got a stocking at my dad's, so that wasn't part of the deal, cake! <laughs> I never trust baked confections. Read the fine print. On the other hand, though, both my parents are much happier. They're remarried. I got seven siblings and step-siblings now. I'm part of a double-blended family. It's a modern term you guys might not hear of. It's kind of like ice cream, actually. Double blended is best. And uh, I think Ben and Jerry's could really corner a market if they made an entire line of their funky flavors, but just for kids whose parents are going through divorce. They could have, like, little Tommy's beating himself up about it. Here, have a scoop up. Pralines and therapy, you know? You're going to need a lot of both to get through these next nine years. Or, you know, Susie still blames herself. You get down on one knee and you say, here. Here's a pint of your mother and I still love you just as much, my love. <laughs> yeah, now with 50% more siblings, so that's nice. And uh, my favorite, though not everybody's, is definitely messy child custardy battle. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of peaches and cream at the beginning, but there's a fuckload of rocky road in the middle, so... That's my lawyer's favorite. Don't worry, guys. There was no, there was no custardy battle for me or my sister or anything like that. It was actually they divided us right down the middle, 50%, just like King Saul, except not as bloody. But uh, I was at my dad's one day, my mom's the next, and that's tough. Going from one house to the other, parent to parent, every other day, I was transferring not just houses but socioeconomic classes. Because my mom, she had money, my dad didn't have as much, and it was kind of like you know, you're up Monday living in the throes of lower upper class with your mom only to plummet on Tuesday to upper upper middle class at your dad's. <laughs> Going from having everything a kid could want to almost everything a kid could want. <laughs> just like Drake, you guys, just like Drake, I started from the bottom of the highest tax bracket imaginable. Yeah. Can I tell you something was tough though, it was inconsistent, you know, your neighbors at moms are doctors, lawyers, judges, TV anchormen that you care about. Then you're slumming in a cul-de-sac Tuesday at Dad's with mm, dental hygienists and veterinarians and TV weathermen. That's so different. My mom would take me out to box seats, luxury at the Flames games. My dad could only afford to split season tickets to the upper deck of the Canadian Football League. That joke only flies in Toronto. I'd get killed in Saskatchewan. 
but it was consistent too because honestly, you know, uh, you, the, the parenting styles. One day mom wants something for you and dad disagrees the next. It's like mom was like, premium cable television will raise our child, where my dad only had the money to spring for the basic digital. It was tough, but at the end of the day, I worked out okay. And you know what? It's Father's Day, as I mentioned. And you know, as a kid of divorce, I have a stepfather. I love him very much. It's Father's Day for stepdads, too. Make sure you remind them. And I think they need a lot more positive PR, a lot more positive press uh, in, the, in the outer sphere of the world, as it's called. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Today it's called that. A&W, just like Ben and Jerry's with the divorce, A&W needs to bring their burger family into the 21st century with the stepfather burger. <laughs> it's exactly like the Papa Burger, except your mom just likes the taste a whole lot more. Thank you very much.